Very first thing I need to do is get all four Apollos out. Get your kit from PoweredPortableSolar.com. It's going to include these carts that make life a lot easier in order to get this whole system operational. On the High Solar Supplemental Expansion Manual, I'm going to page seven, and I'm going to see the total wiring diagram here. For now, we can ignore the blue and the red because we're not putting AC power in, but we want to pay attention to these black lines. These are our split phase cables, which are our blue labeled cables. And then as well, these communication wires. Notice where this one goes around and then this one goes around. We're going to follow this diagram. So I'm going to be calling this unit four and unit one. From unit four, I'm going to go from comms one to unit three, comm two. Then from unit four, comms two, to unit two, comms one. Then unit three, comm one, to unit one, comm two. This is gonna be the biggest stretch. And all that leaves us with is unit two, comm two, to unit one, comm one. Now taking this blue labeled cable, I'm gonna use this as an upside down smiley face. I'm gonna go into battery port one, of unit four to battery port one of unit three. Then unit three, battery port two to unit two, battery port two. And then unit two, battery port one to unit one, battery port one. That is a little bit of a pain in the neck to do all of this wiring compared to other units on the market. But this is the exact reason why this is the only unit in the market that has charge and discharge share. If this unit is drawing a ton of power and this unit is drawing none, then this unit will send excess power all the way to unit one. You don't get that with other systems because they don't have this type of configuration. It's one of the top reasons why the Apollo is my favorite unit of all of the systems on the market currently. Now we're gonna use the battery expansion cables because we have used the two battery ports of units two and three, there is no way to connect this unit to this battery. So there is a different way we have to wire it. It really doesn't matter how the red labeled cables go together. I'm just gonna go from battery port two on unit four to battery port one on battery four. It does not matter if I were to take this and go to battery port two. It just works for me. And now I'm gonna go from battery four port two to the battery that's under unit three, port one. So now this will become leg two or load two or phase two, however you wanna call it, of the system. And the energy is gonna transfer from this battery, through this battery, through this unit, over to this unit, when this unit is discharging. And that's totally normal, it keeps it really well balanced. And then on unit one, I'm gonna go from battery port two to battery port two, and then battery port one on unit one to battery port two, on battery two. And I'm left open with these two battery ports in here in case I ever want to add more batteries. Now we're gonna connect the solar input on these and this is a DC switch. It's a on and off switch for your solar panels. So if I wanted to turn the solar off here at the panels, I would just flip this into the green position or the down position if I want power and put it in the red position or the up position. Now taking the long lead, I'm gonna come up through the front handle and then down through the back handle. And then here you'll notice there's a plus and a negative sign. The red is gonna to go to plus, and the black cable is gonna to go to negative. I know this can be very daunting looking, but it is very simple. We're just doing battery connections, parallel connections, communication connections, and solar connections. It all makes sense if you do it in this order, and the user manual is easy to follow. Now at this stage, I'm gonna go ahead and turn power on to each one of these by turning on the battery switch on the back. And now it's time to put these into position. These roll very easily. You wanna get each one started so that the wheels get turned. And then it's pretty easy to push all four of them or pull all four of them at the same time. Now here on unit number two, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is on P1 as well because this is the second unit. So this means second phase leg one, two P1. Now here on unit three, we can see we're on 2P1, I want this to be 2P2. And unit four, we're also gonna make sure it's on phase two. Now sometimes this will happen where it doesn't wanna accept the parallel mode. You just have to go back to home and tell it to reset the settings, to double check them. That finger will go away, go back into settings and see it clears it up right there. So we have unit one, that's 2P1, unit two, 2P1, unit three, 
2P2, and unit four, 2P2. Now we're almost done with doing this connection here, but this box up here is our split phase box. Now this is a very special box. You can still get 120 volt power right out of here. And during the whole operation of this, these outlets remain usable. Other units, historically, once you connected to 240 volt power, you'd lose power with all the other options. For example, here on the Delta Pro 3, you can't use these 120 volt outlets the same time you're using these 240 volt outlets. Another reason why I really like the Apollos. With the split phase box, on the bottom here, on the right side, it says from Apollos, AC output to loads. I personally chose to remove these caps here because I don't like them being in the way. All we're going to do is take this gray ended cable and the gray side is gonna be going into the split phase box. Now the right side is leg two, the left side is leg one. So these two units over here, I wanna to connect to the right side. As you push these in, they will click into place. Then I'm gonna take the black end of it, pop off this cap here on the front of the Apollo plug it in right here, and then twist lock it into place. So there are two real things that I wish High Solus would change about the Apollo. One, that the power buttons were on the front of the unit so that we didn't have to roll them out. And two, that these cables could then also be connected into the back. And I guess thirdly, that there is a third battery port on each Apollo. That way we could still stack batteries beneath these, but they've obviously figured out how to work by having the split phase cables. Now this is all connected. Generally speaking, this would be mounted on a wall. This is something that's gonna be a permanent installation, but for me, because of how I run my YouTube channel, I need to have this changeable. And that's one of the reasons why I prefer an interlock switch with a generator inlet rather than something like a dedicated smart home panel such as that you do with the Delta Pro Ultra or the Delta Pro 3 or even with these Anchor Solix, they also have their own dedicated uh, smart panel you can use. I prefer the manual switch. The downside is that I have to manually turn it on, but then the upside is I get to run my entire electrical panel and that means I have all of the control. Now the second to last step is gonna be to take this heavy duty cable and plug it into this split phase box. Now normally I recommend having your Apollos next to your generator inlet plug because this cable being across the ground or running across the ceiling can be very inconvenient. But because this is where I stack stuff with how my garage is laid out, this is how I have to show you. Now this heavy duty cable is rated to 12,000 watts of output, which is the output capacity of these four Apollos. So I'm simply gonna take the rounded pin going upwards and plug it here into the split phase box. Notice I have not turned on any AC power yet on these units. You don't want the AC power on yet. On my generator inlet, I can see this metal pin here on the side, and that corresponds to this metal plate here on the side. So I'm gonna put this about the seven or eight o'clock position, and I'm gonna have this groove here on the top. That's gonna to allow me to line this up and push it in and then twist lock it into place. Now in my case, I purposely got this cable long enough that I can run it across the ceiling of my garage to keep my floorway clear. This cable can stay here all the time. This can stay connected all the time. I don't have to disassemble this every time I'm done using it, but realistically, this is enough power for me to live off grid with. So I'll keep it easy and just live off grid, have no power bill. Now I'm ready to hit the blinking finger to get all the settings reset and then turn on AC power. I'm gonna go ahead and hit these AC buttons right here. These will all begin to beep. So now all the AC output is on. Now I'm gonna double check that I've got 240 volt power. So I need to open up this clear box. And the left side is for AC input, which we're not using. And AC output is on the right. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And now I can see that I have 240 volts at 60 Hertz. So now I'm gonna turn off the AC output, plug this back in and I can turn on AC output here. That means now we are supplying power to this generator inlet. Now here in my electrical panel, now I'm gonna turn off power from the grid. I'm gonna flip up this metal bracket and turn power on from right here. Now we're running the whole house off of the Apollos. And one of the things that I actually like about the Apollos is how simple it is. Yes, it has an app, so that you can monitor all of this from anywhere. You can connect these to Wi-Fi, so that way you can keep track of them, but I really don't use the app that much at all. Because I've built this around my power usage, because I've looked at my power energy bill, I know how much power I need, and I have enough solar to power all of this. I'm very confident that I never really have to worry about this, so I check in on it regularly, but not all the time. 
But here I can see everything that's happening on leg one of the house, and then here, everything that's being run on leg two. Now the last thing is to get solar connected. Now for me personally, I chose to put 26 solar panels on my roof, as well as 26 solar panels on a ground mount. So that means I have 13 400 watt solar panels available for each Apollo. In total, this gives me 20.8 kilowatts of solar panels, which every day should be able to make around 100 kilowatt hours of power, and I only have 43 kilowatt hours of battery. What that means is during the day I can run heavy loads, as an example, an electric dryer or an electric oven or an electric water heater, as well as the other things in my house. And the solar is predominantly gonna take care of those things while making enough excess solar to fully recharge the batteries every single day. That should still be fairly possible on partly cloudy days. I run everything into my house using a conduit from the ground mount and I have this conduit here for my roof and I have each section labeled with a color and a label so that way I know exactly what's being connected where. So all I'm gonna do is connect these four sets of wires that has 13 panels in each one, one of these to each Apollo. Now for long-term use, I'm gonna put these cables behind the shelving unit so it looks all nice and clean, there's nothing to trip on, but just so you guys can see right now, I have all of these wires to each individual one of these, and now all I'm gonna do is flip this to the red position, and then this will beep, and we're gonna start getting solar input. Now it is absolutely critical that you do not exceed 500 volts on any of these, you will fry the charge controller if you do that. What I recommend is don't go above 450 volts because when solar panels are in cold weather, they will actually produce more voltage. So in this case, I'm right at about 450 volts on each one of these. And that's the VOC or the open circuit voltage rating on your solar panels. Take the amount of solar panels you have multiplied by the VOC on the sticker on the back of the panel and that will tell you the number that is corresponding to that 500 volt rating here. Try to be at 450 or less. So on unit one I'm at 4100 watts, then 4000, 3600, and 3600. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that these two are on the ground mount and that those are on the roof mount. So if I chase this wire over from unit four, because I've got this tag that says roof west. So this is the west side of the roof. And the reason it's making less power is because of the tilt. My roof is about a 412 pitch, and that just means that my panels aren't up very steep. Now we're already into the fall, and that means that the sun is getting lower into the sky. And so because the ground mount is facing more towards the south, it's tilted up more, it's actually gonna produce more power. In this instance, I'm getting about 10% more power than these right here, just by having that tilt. Ground mounts are much harder to put in, but you do get a lot more out of them. So the time that I recommend a ground mount is if you have the space for it, and if you don't have a south facing roof, or if your roof is covered in shade, and there's an area that you can get to that has no shade, where you can put a ground mount. So that is the beginning to end on how you connect four Apollos to a house to run it off grid using an interlock switch and generator inlet. This is my favorite method because it's very easy to have an electrician put in that generator plug. And then by running cords in this manner, you can literally be off grid in an afternoon. This can literally be done entirely in less than an hour as far as the connections go. Obviously mounting panels and installing them is gonna take much longer. And I'll have videos about that. But if you wanna see how I was able to live off grid at my house here with only two of these Apollos, click this link up here and I'll show you how I did that. And then I'll have another video here in the near future where I show you how long I've been able to live with these four Apollos off grid without having to worry about any power. Guys, go to poweredportablesolar.com to find this kit. It's cheaper than you can get from the manufacturer and you get lifetime customer service as well as a bunch of other free items in the kit that you don't get anywhere else. Please be prepared. I'll see you guys in the next video.